Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try to discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that you can get all the latest updates for our upcoming videos. You can also join our telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes as well as the updates for all our videos. So let's move on to question number one now, which says RBI constructed a composite digital payment index to capture the extent of digitization of payments across the country. So this very index comprises of five broad parameters which uh, enable the ma measurement of the deepening and penetration of the digital payments in the country. Which of the following is not one of those parameters? So let's discuss a bit about this index and then we'll come back to the question. So RBI constructed an index called the Digital Payment Index. So as the name suggests, it's going to gauge what? It's going to gauge the extent of digital payments used in our country. How much digitized have we become when it comes to making payments online? Okay, so there are different platforms which are available. We can do the mobile banking, we have UPI, different e-wallets. So to what extent have we accepted these digital payment system? How are they doing? So that measurement is done through this very index which RBI constructed. So it considers five parameters through which they can assess the acceptance of digital payments in India. So those five parameters enable us to measure how much deepened are the digital payments in India or what is the extent of their penetration in the country over different time periods. So what are these five parameters? The five parameters have been mentioned over here and the highest weightage is given to the payment performance that is 45% weightage. Other than with that, we have the payment enablers whose uh, weightage is 25% in this index. Then we have payment infrastructure. So there are certain demand side factors where weightage is given 10% and certain supply side factors whose weightage is 15%. And the least weightage is that of consumer centricity. So let's see what sub parameters are covered under these five major parameters. In ke andar hum kya kya assess karte hain. क्या क्या फर्दर सब पैरामीटर्स है जिनके थ्रू हमें पता चलता है कि पेमेंट इनेबलर्स कितने यूजफुल हैं हमारे डिजिटल पेमेंट्स को स्प्रेड करने में कितना अच्छा हमारा पेमेंट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है कितना कंज्यूमर्स अवेयर है इसके बारे में कितनी उनको प्रॉब्लम्स फेस करनी पड़ती है तो इन सब पैरामीटर्स के अंदर फर्दर क्या पैरामीटर्स आते हैं वो हम देख लेते हैं जिससे हमें एक आइडिया लगेगा कि कितना ज्यादा पेनिट्रेट हो रहे हैं डिजिटल पेमेंट्स हमारी कंट्री में सो दीज आर दी फाइव पैरामीटर्स First is payment enablers which help us to make the payment online. क्या ऐसी चीजें हैं जो enable करती हैं हमें कि हम digitally payments कर सकें. The first and foremost thing is to have an internet, okay, which which is basically the network which helps in making the payments online. So internet, mobile, these are some basic amenities which we need when we want to make the payments online. Then Aadhaar verification is there, okay, so that's important. Uh, bank accounts are needed, participants are there, merchants are there. So all of these help us to make the payments online. Then talking about the payment infrastructure. So payment infrastructure mein kya kya a jata hai? Agar hum demand side infrastructure ki baat kare, to aapko digitally payments karne ke liye kya kya chahiye ho sakta hai? You might demand the debit cards, the credit cards, the prepaid payment instruments. Debit credit cards are the kind of prepaid payment instruments only other than we, that also we have other prepaid in, uh, payment instruments like your e-wallets and all okay then we need the customer registered mobile and internet banking fast tag so ye kuch payment infrastructures hai jo digital jane mein hume help karte hai aur wahi agar hum supply side payment infrastructure uh, ki baat kare to uske liye hume kya chahiye we need the bank branches which are going to provide such services we need the business correspondence which will help in providing the services where banks are not there. Then we need the ATMs, we need the point of sale terminals, the QR codes, the intermediaries. So all these are part of the supply side infrastructure. Iske baad aata hai next, jisko sabse zada weightage di gai hai payment performance ki. Hum digitally payments kar rahe hai, we are making digital payments. 
how successful they are what is the extent of good performance which they are offering so uh, the ex the volume of digital payment system the value kitna zyada digital payments ho rahi hain kitne value ki ho rahi hain okay kitni currency hai circulation mein kitne cash withdrawals ho rahe hain paper clearing system kaisa hai all these things are part of payment performance so sabse important isme aa jata hai ki kitne value ki kitne volume ki aap digital ट्रांजेक्शन्स कर रहे हो एंड लास्ट इज दी कंज्यूमर सेंट्रिसिटी सो इसमें आ जाता है कि कंज्यूमर्स कितना अवेयर है इन सिस्टम्स के बारे में कितना सक्सेसफुली वो उसको यूज़ कर पा रहे हैं कोई कोई प्रॉब्लम्स तो नहीं आ रही कोई फ्रॉड तो नहीं हो रहा साइबर अटैक की प्रॉब्लम तो नहीं है कस्टमर की क्या ग्रीवेंसेज हैं वो सारी चीज़ें कंज्यूमर सेंट्रिसिटी में आ जाती है इट इंक्लूड्स ऑल थिंग्स लाइक दी हाउ अवेयर द कस्टमर इज हाउ एजुकेटेड इज अबाउट दीज डिजिटल पेमेंट सिस्टम्स इज ही एबल टू यूटिलाइज देम बेस्ड ऑन हिज अवेयरनेस हिज नॉलेज हिज एजुकेशन और नॉट ओके देन वॉट आर दी कस्टमर कंप्लेन्स दी फ्रॉड्स विच आर हैपनिंग थ्रू दी सिस्टम सिस्टम डाउन टाइम द टाइम दी ट्रांजेक्शन्स आर हैपनिंग और नॉट और दे आर बींग डिक्लाइन सो ऑल दोज थिंग्स कम अंडर कंज्यूमर सेंट्रिसिटी so these are five major parameters on the basis of which we assess the penetration of digital payments in our country so moving ahead now this index was constructed with march 2018 as the base period and for that very base period the dpi score was decided or set at 100 so ye construct ki gayi isme jo base year liya gaya hai wo 2018 liya gaya hai march ka 2018 jab कि इंडेक्स उन्होंने 100 पे सेट की कि इतनी इंडेक्स है अब हमें देखना है कि ओवर टाइम हम ग्रो हुए हैं कि नहीं सो वी हैव टू वॉच दैट वेदर वी हैव ग्रोन ओवर दी इयर्स विज वी दिस बेस ईयर इंडेक्स सो यू कैन सी इन मार्च 2019 नाइनटीन वी reached this index reached 153 point something then in 20 september it increased further in march 2020 further then in september it increased and now in march 2021 the latest figure says it is at 270.59 so you can see the this very index has been increasing over time okay jisse hum ye jo index hai hamari badh rahi hai jisse hame ye pata chalta hai ki hum zyada se zyada digital payment systems ko accept kar rahe hain use kar rahe hain hamari value hamari volume of digital transactions badh rahi hai in fact the rbi reports which have been coming up over uh, coming up this recent years report has also shown that because of the pandemic this digital system has seen a big boost and that's the reason why this index is seeing a rise over time because we have started accepting and using digital systems a lot okay so this very index is published semi annually from march 2021 onwards all right so this was all about this index so if i move back to the question which of these is not a parameters because all four of these are parameters that's why answer is option e none of the above okay now moving on to question number 2 which says recently the union cabinet has cleared the deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation bill 2021 it allows customers of failed or stressed banks which are placed under moratorium to get their deposits up to 5 lakh back within dash days of start of moratorium so we know that we the people deposit money in the banks okay and five amount up to 5 lakh is insured by the deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation so if a bank is in a such a situation that is it is likely to fail or it is into some kind of a stressed situation because of which it is delaying the payment back of the deposits of the people to them then in that case we can claim the amount from this dicgc if the bank is unable to pay so 5 lakh tak ki insurance hoti hai jo dicgc deti hai ki agar bank nahi pay kar payega depositors ka paisa wapas to wo corporation pay back karegi okay earlier there used to be no specific time limit within which that uh, money will be given back to you because of which there were a lot of delays cuz the bank depositors had to wait for a lot of time to get back their own money so now this bill was proposed and it has recently been cleared where certain time period has been specified within which this dicgc will help 
to uh, depositors to get back their money in case bank is into some kind of a stressed situation so what is that new time period which has been specified under this bill so the period is of 90 days so answer to this question is option c let's discuss a bit about this bill so recently union cabinet as i was as as the question already says has cleared this dicgc bill what does it allow it allows the customers of failed or stressed banks placed under moratorium to get their deposit up to 5 lakh back within 90 days of start of moratorium so banks delay kar rahe hain aapke deposits wapas karne mein kyunki okay, us case mein bank agar stress situation mein hai wo wapas nahi kar pata to within 90 days of start of that moratorium जब से वो डिले शुरू हुआ आपकी पेमेंट्स वो आपकी डिपॉजिट्स वापस करने में विद इन नाइन्टी डेज अब आपको पेमेंट आप, आपकी डिपॉजिट्स आपको वापस मिल जाएंगी और ये कौन गारंटी करता है फाइव लाख तक का अमाउंट डी आई सी जी सी वॉट इज डी आई सी जी सी इट्स अ फुल्ली ओन सब्सिडरी गवर्नड बाय आर बी आई विच सर्व द डिपॉजिट इंश्योरेंस एंड क्रेडिट गारंटी फॉर बैंक इन इंडिया तो बैंक को जो डिपॉजिट इंश्योरेंस और क्रेडिट गारंटी की फैसिलिटी देती है वो कॉरपोरेशन है डी आई सी जी सी डेबिट डिपॉजिट इंश्योरेंस और क्रेडिट गारंटी क्या है डिपॉजिट इंश्योरेंस ये है कि डिपॉजिटर्स अपना पैसा बैंक में जमा करते हैं ठीक है हो सकता है बैंक ऐसी सिचुएशन में आ जाए स्ट्रेस सिचुएशन में कि वो उनका पैसा वापस ना कर पाए तो उस केस में ये प्रोटेक्शन प्रोवाइड करते हैं डी कि अगर बैंक रीपे नहीं कर पाएंगे तो कुछ अमाउंट इंश्योर्ड है वो ये कॉरपोरेशन पे बैक करेगी एंड क्रेडिट गारंटी इज गारंटिंग द क्रेडिट आप एज अ बैंक किसी को डेट देते हो ओके सो इट इज अ गारंटी दैट ऑफन प्रोवाइड्स फॉर अ स्पेसिफिक रेमिडी टू द क्रेडिटर इफ इज डेटर डज नॉट रिटर्न दी डेट ओके आपने किसी को डेट दी वो आपको वापस नहीं कर पा रहा है तो उस केस में भी डी आई सी जी सी हेल्प करती है जब वो क्रेडिट गारंटी प्रोवाइड करेगी कि वो अगर रीपे नहीं कर पाएगा जिसने आपसे डेट ली तो वी विल रीपे टू सम एक्सटेंड सो ये डिपॉजिट इंश्योरेंस और क्रेडिट गारंटी की फैसिलिटीज ये कॉरपोरेशन प्रोवाइड करती है व्हाट इज डिपॉजिट इंश्योरेंस इट्स दी प्रोटेक्शन कवर अगेंस्ट लॉसेज अक्रूइंग टू बैंक डिपॉजिट If a bank fails and has no money to pay the depositors, so if bank fails, it, ha- it doesn't have the money to pay back the depositors. Then some amount will be paid by this corporation because it is providing the insurance of that much amount of deposit, which recently uh, was decided to be five lakhs and was one lakh earlier. पहले एक लाख तक की deposit insurance होती थी, उसको बढ़ा के पांच लाख कर दिया गया था. And credit guarantee is the guarantee that provides the remedy to the creditor if debtor does not return his debt. All right. So if I move ahead now, this 90-day period will be divided into two halves: first 45 days and second next 45 days. So in first 45 days, what will happen? The stress bank will collect all information regarding the claimants, the claim amount, and inform it to the DICGC. And then in next 45 days, this DICGC needs to process the claim and pay the depositors their money. सो so, पहले 45 डेज में जो भी स्ट्रेस बैंक है वो इन्फॉर्मेशन कलेक्ट करेगा कि कौन कौन डिपॉजिटर्स थे जिनको जो पैसा क्लेम कर रहे हैं जिन्हें हमने पैसा रीपे करना है कितना अमाउंट करना है और वो डीआईसीजीसी को इन्फॉर्म करेंगे अगर वो स्ट्रेस सिचुएशन में है वो खुद रीपे नहीं कर सकते उसके बाद डी जो है वो उन क्लेम्स को प्रोसेस करेगी और उन डिपॉजिटर्स को उनका पैसा वापस दिलाने में हेल्प करेगी ओके इट विल पे बैक द अमाउंट नॉट एक्सीडिंग फाइव लैक earlier the account holders had to wait for years uh, till the liquidation or restructuring of the distressed lender wo problem ab solve ho jayegi pehle agar bank jo hai us stress situation mein hai to wait karna padta tha account holders ko ki kab wo liquidate hoga ya kab wo restructure hoga kab wo amount kamayega aur hame repay kar payega ab wo problem solve ho jayegi kyunki 90 days ke andar andar 5 lakh tak ka amount hai agar to wo unhe repay ho unki deposits unhe wapas mil jayengi Uh, five lakh. This I have already told you. It was one lakh. Then increased to five lakh. Okay, there have been failure of different banks like PMC, S yes, Bank, like Lakshmi Vilas Bank, because of which the depositors are suffering. Because of which these things are really going to help. So it is going to cover a lot percentage of the depositors and the deposit value in this banking system. All right. So this was about this very bill. Now why this bill has been proposed? अभी जैसे कि मैंने बताया डिपॉजिटर्स को प्रॉब्लम होती थी उनको अपना ही डिपॉजिट का पैसा इयर्स इन ईयर्स तक वापस नहीं मिलता था 
अपना ही पैसा विड्रॉ नहीं कर सकते क्योंकि बैंक जो है वो एक स्ट्रेस सिचुएशन में है आपको वेट करना पड़ता था कि कब उसके असेट सेल ऑफ होंगे और आपको रीपेमेंट्स मिलेंगी आपकी डिपॉजिट्स की या कब वो रीस्ट्रक्चर होंगे अच्छे से फंक्शन करेंगे और आपका डिपॉजिट आपको वापस मिलेगी अब वो प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व हो जाएगी ये बिल पास होने से इसीलिए ये बिल को पास किया गया है सो द मोरिटोरियम में भी रिजोल्व सून इन सम केसेज बट अदर्स में टेक ईयर्स टूगेदर सो दिस मीन्स depositors may not have the access to their own funds for years so to solve this very problem this bill is really very useful because with the 90 days it will help you get back your money with the amendments to the icgc act it is now possible for depositors to withdraw funds up to 5 lakh under stress uh, for the banks under stress in 90 days it's a big relief for customers and it will increase the confidence of depositors even further so जो पैसा डिपॉजिट करने से डरते थे उनके लिए एक ये बिग बूस्ट देगा कि वो और से ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा पैसा डिपॉजिट कर सकते हैं बैंक्स में क्योंकि अब उन्हें 90 डेज में अगर स्ट्रेस सिचुएशन आई भी तब भी अपना अमाउंट वापस मिल जाएगा सो दिस इज द बेनिफिट विच दिस बिल इज गोइंग टू ऑफर सो इफ आई मूव बैक टू द क्वेश्चन वी हैव ऑलरेडी आंसर इट इज ऑप्शन सी नाइन्टी डेज मूविंग ऑन टू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नाउ आर रिसेंटली RBI recently allowed the non-banks to participate in the centralized payment systems. You have to identify the statements which are correctly related. So let's discuss this first, and then we'll come back to the question. So centralized payment systems में आपके आ जाते हैं NEFT, RTGS. Okay, RTGS and NEFT are your centralized payment systems. So what RBI has done? RBI has recently allowed the non-banks. to participate in these centralized payment systems earlier only the banks and certain entities were allowed to access this system now non banks have also been allowed to participate in this centralized payment system rbi in its april statement on development and regulatory policy stated that the non banks will be allowed and now they are making sure that this gets implemented in a phased manner so in first phase which entities will be allowed to use the centralized payment system i will be discussing that in the upcoming slides okay so why this step has been taken ab ye non banks ko bhi kyu rtgs or neft jaise centralized payment systems uh, operate karna allow kar rahe hain what's the reason it will reduce the overall settlement risk because not only we do, these these uh, non banks don't have to approach the bank for providing these services so they can themselves provide overall settlement risks can reduce and the non banks will benefit a lot from this it will help them in reducing their costs it will help them minimize their dependence on the banks it will reduce the time taken for completing the payments and it will also eliminate the uncertainty why because the settlement is carried out through the central bank money centralized payment system hai central bank se connected hai so overall uncertainty kam ho jayegi ओके okay. और जो डिपेंडेंस है बैंक्स में वो कम हो जाएगी जिससे कि कम टाइम लगेगा और ये सारे फैसिलिटीज जो हैं लोगों को प्रोवाइड हो जाएंगे इजीली ओके सो मूविंग अहेड नाउ सेंट्रलाइज्ड पेमेंट सिस्टम इन इंडिया इंक्लूड योर आर टी जी एस एंड दैट इज योर रियल टाइम ग्रॉस सेटलमेंट एंड योर एन ई एफ टी दैट इज योर नेशनल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक फंड ट्रांसफर बोथ ऑफ देम आर ओन्ड एंड ऑपरेटेड बाई रिजर्व बैंक सो आर टी जी एस और एन ई एफ टी क्या होता है real time gross settlement is a real time transfer of funds to the beneficiary account primarily for large value transactions jab aapki large value transaction hoti hai more than 2 lakh ki transaction hai kam se kam 2 lakh ki transaction rtgs pe karni hoti hai that's the minimum requirement so real time transfer aapka funds ka aap kisi aur ko transfer karna chahte ho 2 lakh se zyada ka amount to aap usko rtgs ke through kar sakte ho why we do we call it a real time gross settlement it's real time because processing of instructions is done at the time they are received hum instruction dete hain ki itna amount transfer karna hai usi samay wo transfer hota hai usko uh, ek sath pile up karke baki transactions ke sath nahi rakha jata ki hum baad mein ek sath karenge unhe process okay wo neft mein kiya jata hai and it is gross settlement why because settle the settlement of fund transfer instructions occurs individually inko batches mein nahi kiya jata ki ek sath transactions ikhatti kar li aur ek sath process ki nahi har individual ki transaction ko individually hi process kiya jata hai okay then if we talk about neft uh, the national electronic fund transfer iske through bhi aap funds transfer kar sakte ho jaise aap rtgs mein karte ho lekin yahan processing batches mein hoti hai here the processing is done in batches 
and there is no minimum limit so so in say in every half an hour uh, up any ft transaction happens so they together they bring together various transactions and process them all together then theek hai so rtjs mein kya hai ek individual ne kaha ki itna amount hame transfer karna hai in us individually hi wo transaction process ho jata hai but in any ft uh, they pile up the transactions and in every half an hour in any ft is done so suppose from one bank to the other bank say 10 lakh needs to be transferred through any ft and that other bank is also making the any ft transfer to this first bank and the amount is say 5 lakh so the net transfer ha- will happen okay and this is going to happen in batches not done individually so ek sath sari transaction pile up kar di jati hai aur unke jo bhi batch timings hai after every half an hour usko process kiya jata hai this is the basic difference between the two now as a part of its drive rbi has been taking a lot of steps to promote these digital payments hame pata hai rbi ne digital ecosystem ko promote karne ke liye bahut se steps liye hain isiliye rtgs aur nft ko bhi 24/7 kar diya gaya tha इसके अलावा एक और वे इस चीज को बूस्ट देने का है कि ज्यादा से ज्यादा एंट्रीज को डिजिटल पेमेंट्स सिस्टम्स यूज करना अलाउ कर दिया जाए ओके वन मेजर स्टेप टेकन बाय आरबीआई टू गिव बूस्ट टू डिजिटल पेमेंट्स वाज 24/7 एन एफटी एंड आरटीजीएस अदर वे इज टू एक्सटेंड द एक्सेस टू मोर एंटिटीज बिकॉज़ ऑफ व्हिच दे आर नाउ गोइंग ऑन टू द नॉन बैंक्स एज़ वेल टू एक्सेस द एन एफटी एंड आरटीजीएस व्हिच वाज अर्लियर रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू सम बैंक्स नबार्ड एग्जाम बैंक एंड ऑल okay so if i move ahead now who is eligible non bank so वैसे तो आपके non banks में बहुत सी entities आ जाती हैं okay non banks can include your payment system providers your nbfcs the financial regulators but initially in the first phase only three kinds of uh, non banks will be allowed to use this facility and they include your prepaid payment issuers your card networks and your white label atm operators all right so these three will be in initial phase allowed to uh, to be the non banks involved in the centralized payment systems so it will provide these non banks the direct access to centralized payment system ab direct access unko diya ja raha hai to kya kya hoga uske under they will be allotted a separate ifsc code jaise ki banks ko ifsc code diya jata hai aise hi is non bank ko bhi diya jayega non the ifsc code will be allotted to this non bank and it stands for the indian financial system code so what is it it's a 11 digit code which helps in identifying the branch the individual bank branch which participate in the online transfer options like any ft and rtj so ye number ab aapke non banks ko bhi allot hoga iske alawa jo ye non banks hain ye rbi ke sath current account settlement account bhi kholenge okay so non banks will be opening a current account with rbi they will maintain a settlement account with rbi so they will be maintaining a current account with rbi in its core banking system ecobear is its core banking system the centralization makes a uh, the centralization does makes a one stop shop for financial services a real, reality and the core banking solution customers can access their accounts from any branch anywhere irrespective of whether they are physically opened where they have physically opened their account so is कोर बैंकिंग सॉल्यूशन का पार्ट होगी वो नॉन बैंक ओके इससे ये क्या क्या इनेबल होता है कि कस्टमर ने अपना बैंक अकाउंट किसी ब्रांच में खोला होगा बट वो उसे कहीं और से भी एक्सेस कर सकते हैं सेंट्रलाइजेशन का बेनिफिट होगा इसके अलावा जो नॉन बैंक है वो इन्फिनेट और एस एफ एम एस का भी मेम्बर बनेगा दी नॉन बैंक विल गेट दी मेम्बरशिप ऑफ इन्फिनेट एंड एस एफ एम एस वॉट इज इन्फिनेट इन्फिनेट स्टैंड फॉर दी Indian financial network so it's a network which connects together RBI the member institutions the member banks and the other financial institutions so ye closed group user group network hai jo RBI member banks aur financial institutions ko connect karta hai aur SFMS stands for the structured financial messaging system so it's a messaging system the financial messaging system which help connects these institutions with RBI okay so this is what happens under the direct access to non banks which offer various benefits to non banks so isse non banks ko kya benefits honge pehla to hai efficiency ki ab wo khud hi in payments ko kar sakte hain banks pe dependence kam hogi so for non banks the cost of routing payments through banks will be minimized the risk of failure or delay 
can be eliminated because these transactions are directly initiated by the non banks themselves so wo aur zyada efficient banengi next is it will ensure more competition more innovation now these non banks will offer financial services which were earlier restricted to just banks only ab unhe bhi ye rtgs neft प्रोवाइड करना अलाउ कर दिया गया है जो पहले सिर्फ बैंक्स कर सकते थे तो इससे वो थोड़े और आ, उनकी कैपेबिलिटीज बिल्ट अप होंगी और इसका यूज वो कर सकते हैं और नई चीजों के साथ आने में और इनोवेटिव सॉल्यूशंस के साथ आने में लेकिन यूज देयर कैपेबिलिटीज टू एसिमिलेट एंड एनालाइज डेटा विच विल सपोर्ट देयर इनोवेशन एंड सोल्यूशन then it will also ensure more better risk management and stability because the settlement is carried out in is through the central bank money it reduces the uncertainty and the settlement risk as well and lastly it will ensure some data protection because there will be direct access to the centralized payment system for these non banks okay which will safeguard any kind of customer information or fund flows so this is the benefit which these non banks are going to get So if I move back to the question, which of these statements are correctly related? See, first is correctly related that the RTGS and NFT are centralized payment systems. Second is also correct because it says that it's going to this direct access for non-banks is going to offer benefits like low cost of payment, reduced dependence, and all. third is also correct that in first phase only ppi issuers white label atm and card networks will be provided the access so all statements are correct that's why answer is option e this was all for today's session i hope you found the session to be useful with this i would like to end up the session thank you so much